Lisa. I have a lot of photos of cake in front of me because 2019 was the year of the cake. And how this all started is was Christmas 2018. My husband suggested that I bake my mother a cake for Christmas, a chocolate cake. She had become really loving chocolate cakes or any kind of bakery cakes, but especially chocolate cakes. And this is unusual. She never had that much of a sweet tooth, but she's developed quite a sweet tooth over the last couple of years. And at that time, cakes were her obsession. She's moved back to pies, which is more traditional for her. But back then, she liked cakes. And he further said, and I like the idea. Mother liked the idea. And then he further suggested that I bake her a cake every month. And I said, no, no, that's too much. And she thought it was too much. And it was, it was a lot of commitment because you don't know what the year is going to bring. Well, what happened, though, is after I baked the Christmas cake, which is not pictured here, then in January, I baked a cheesecake, and I did, it gave her some, kept some for us, and I, in February, I did something for Valentine's Day, in March, um, I, we started in our birthday uh, rounds for the year, each of us have birthdays in the spring, and my, we had Mother's Day, and then just one thing led to another, and so we had a lot of cakes, and in the, the only month I missed was one month in the fall, so I have 11 cakes pictured here, some of them are recipes that I have made many times, uh, like this cheesecake for my husband's birthday, and some of them are things that I had never made before, um, like this cake for my birthday. Some of them were things that I've had really good success with. This apple cake is absolutely fabulous, even though it doesn't, you know, you can't really tell that much from the picture. It tastes delicious. Other things did not go well. I've never had a cake to collapse on me, but I did a chocolate chip pound cake that just didn't set up in the middle. I, I used the mini chocolate chips, like it said in the recipe, and they just, I think they just melted and they just, they were just never going to set up. So no matter how long I baked it. So um, you could kind of eat around the ends and that was it. But anyway, I made all these cakes and I took photographs of them. A lot of them for Instagram, but I, I took a photograph of each one with my camera or with my phone. So I printed them out and I have them ready to go on a scrapbook layout about the year of the cake. What I thought I'd do to start with is to cut these down and see if I can fit them on one 12 by 12. I'd rather not do a double page spread for this. It's kind of a cute thing to happen. I did put a lot of time into it, but I don't really want to do a double page on this one. I just don't. Um, and I know that technically four or six four by sixes can fit on a double page spread, but I want to have some room, or a single page, but I do, I want to have some room for some other things. So I'm going to trim these down, I'm going to lay them on a piece of cardstock, and just see how I might uh, arrange them. And by the way, there's a cake in the oven right now. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. It's the first cake I've baked this year in 2020. I think there might even be a little bit of chocolate underneath my fingernails, but it's a recipe I've used for years and years. And I asked, I made the mistake of asking my husband what he wanted for Valentine's Day. And what he suggested, I didn't really want to bake because it was going to take quite a bit of time. And so I just went back to doing what I want to do. I finally decided, you know, I'm the one who's baking it. So, and he likes this cake. He just doesn't really remember, but he'll, he'll love it. And I really, really love it. And so it's, I don't bake it too often because I eat way too much of it. But anyway, that's what's going on here today. So I'm going to be working on this page off and on. I really didn't have any idea how I wanted to arrange them. So I just started laying some things out. Um, I thought that as I got going that if I put that pumpkin cake, which I had the best picture of, in the middle, that I could sort of do the others in a circle around there. And as I went around, I didn't get quite a full circle, but I sort of like that. It gives me a little bit of free space to do for embellishment or journaling, that kind of thing. And I may rearrange them. I, I have them pretty much in order that I made the cake, something like that. Um, but I, I may rearrange them to see what fits the best and so that certain cakes don't get covered up by the corners of other photos. I've got a lot of chocolate here. And that pink paper was just something I had to throw things on. So I thought I would do a chocolate background. I have Stamping Up's chocolate chip paper, which is discontinued paper. That's the one on top there that's a little bit redder. And then I had the early espresso paper. I decided to use the chocolate chip. I couldn't tell that much difference in how they looked with the... Um, uh, photos and that's some of the discontinued cardstock I'm trying to kind of work out of my stash. Now I realized also that I needed to label these cakes because 
you know, even a couple of years from now, I'm not going to remember what, <laughs> what these particular cakes were if I want to make something again. So I got out some paper clips. I'm going to put the, I'm going to type out the names of what each cake was and then put that on the photograph. I'm looking for something for titles right now. I've got my thickers out here. And I think something in a red tone because I have a fair amount of red colors in the photos as well. So I think that'll show up really well on the chocolate uh, background. So I've got all of the text on there and I went ahead and glued them on and then I just add the paperclip more for uh, the appearance of it. Now I felt like the page needed some other color. So I'm going to do a circle and some gold to go kind of underneath that main photo in the middle and then I can put my letters sort of around that and that'll help anchor the page. I also have some stickers I was going to do just like thumbs up and thumbs down kind of things um, and what I found is these stickers I have hearts, I have stars, I have check marks. Uh, there's one cake there that one that fell on me I wanted to put a down arrow on it because it didn't go very well. There are a couple that I don't put anything on those were sort of the so-so cakes that they were okay, but I wouldn't make them again. Um, and then there are some that I really, really liked. So they got stars or hearts or uh, check marks. I think I put two stars on that apple cake because it's one of our favorites. So just, you know, a little something to indicate that we liked certain things. Now I need embellishment. And I've looked at some chipboard pieces. I have a stamp set with a cake on it. And what I end up with is this chipboard, this little cupcake. And there was one instance of my baking cupcake, so it's not really that representative, but it fits the space really well. So the one thing I almost forgot was to put the year on there. I've got the year of the cake, but I didn't put the year on. So I've got some stickers I'm going to add uh, 2019 on there, and I need something to put that little cupcake on. So I've got some red and white checked paper that I think sort of goes with this homey kind of look and we'll put our cupcake on that and then put 2019 down there in some October afternoon little mini market stickers. And then the final thing is to bring a little bit of color out to the edges. So I've got some of that gold paper that I'm making some corners and I had some chipboard corners that went with the set that came that had the cupcake in it and had just the right color so I'm doing a uh, kind of a double layer there of corner pieces that I can glue on and that just really helps to uh, tie this page together. And here we have the year of cake with our corners completed and that sort of draws that color out. Just a touch of journaling. So the page is really a lot of photos but with a few little symbols and the labels on there, I think it communicates what went on for a year's worth of baking, or at least all the cake baking that went on uh, last year. So thanks for joining me today. I think a good way to celebrate completing this page is to enjoy the piece of cake from the cake that I made for Valentine's Day. So it's a chocolate layer cake or a sheet cake. It's my favorite cake. I did not bake it last year, so I definitely deserve to have some of this. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you'll check out some of my other videos while you're here.